Hey everyone, in Fusion 360, you've got the line command and it's probably gonna be one of the most used tools that you're gonna have in almost every workflow. So let's talk about some of the things you need to know and some pro tips you should be aware of when using the line command. The first thing is, how do you even expose or bring the line command up? You have to create a sketch. So you will hit this create sketch button and it will ask you to select a plane or a face. So I've selected a plane, one of my standard three planes, and now I can sketch in space and start clicking. Um, it's worth noting that if you already have an object or a model that you've built, for example, if I have this rectangular plate and we extrude that going up, this has faces that can be selected. So if I select this face, I can now start a sketch even with that face anywhere on the face, often space as well as if it were a plane that extends off in space. Next, chaining and separate line entities. When you click the line command, it's going to let you click at the beginning and at the end. When I click this end, it wants to continue to sketch more segments for me. And this is helpful so that you can do closed sections. But if you'd like to stop, there are a few different options. If all you wanted was this line, you can hit the screen check mark and that will stop your line command. Also, you can, when you're about to sketch the second line, if you don't want to hit escape on the keyboard, that'll release you, but it does keep you in the sketch toolbar and in the sketch commands. Or third, you can just simply choose a different sketch entity. So I'm about to do the line, I'll go over to circle, and now it's in the circle sketch tool. One thing that's really helpful is the ability to snap. So when you're sketching, it can be really helpful to be able to snap to endpoints quickly or to other entities. Now, when I'm hovering, it's going to wake up things like the midpoint of this line or snap to that endpoint or snap to a horizontal value. This is a horizontal constraint that's um, automatically being applied so that you can see that it's going to keep this right angle when I'm sketching lines. Next, it's important when you're sketching in Fusion 360 that you close up your profiles. So here you can see that I've almost finished sketching a rectangle and I didn't quite connect them at the end. When I go to hit extrude and add depth, it doesn't know what to do with this. It doesn't have a closed shape. But if I were to just kind of force this sketch and even just overlap them, you now see this profile with the shaded blue. This will extrude, even though it's not a very clean sketch where um, those lines just overlap and have some, it doesn't look good and it's not um, great practice, but it will work. So Fusion 360 wants closed profiles. And that again, that's where snapping can be really helpful. One pro tip in Fusion 360 is using lines to troubleshoot. I'm in a sketch. For some reason, the shaded profile is not showing up. So when I hit extrude, this doesn't work. Or I hit revolve, this doesn't work. Why is it not working? A way to find the problem is to sketch lines across your design. So I sketch a couple different lines and I can see both of these profiles are good. They have this shaded blue. Over here is a problem. So if I drag it over, it looks like to the left of my line, there is a problem. So when I zoom in here, I can continue to drag the line. It looks like there's something here. So when I get really close, I see that I didn't actually connect the lines together, even though from a distance, it looked like they did. So now if I were to delete these lines and try to hit extrude, I'm gonna make sure that these two are actually coincident. So I'm gonna select the two points and choose coincident. Now they're connected, light blue shows up so that it will extrude. Use lines to troubleshoot those complex sketches. 
How do you control the size and shape of all of your lines? That's with Smart Dimension. So in Fusion 360, you can hit D for Smart Dimension, or you can find it here on the toolbar. In your sketch, simply select the lines that you've placed. It lets you put a distance on that value. If you select two lines, it'll let you do an angle between those lines. And this lets you create parametric design where you can make changes quickly on the fly and it will adjust your lines based on the dimensions that you type in. Now, when you're sketching lines, one powerful thing is this auto dimension capability. I'm about to sketch this line off in space. You'll notice the two different dimensions that just popped up automatically. And these are really cool. So what you can do is you can hit 100 for this first. That's the distance or length of this line. I hit tab on my keyboard and now it's brought me over to an angle. And so I can say this is at a 45. So not only does it place it correctly, it adds these dimensions that are now editable in the future for you, uh, creating your more detailed sketch or fully constrained sketch where everything is defined a lot faster using that shortcut. When I come to do the next line, I can do the same thing. I can hit tab to toggle between these two different dimensions where I want 60 millimeter in length and I want a 33 degree angle hit OK, and now it's sketched that with these dimensions. Of course, in Fusion 360, a really important thing you want to be aware of, I've mentioned a little bit earlier, was constraints. And this is where you're effectively describing how something's supposed to behave. This line should always be flat, meaning it should always be horizontal. If I were to delete this constraint, I can now you know, drag this angle. But if it should always remain flat, that's where you wanna make sure that you add those proper constraints. Select the line, choose horizontal, and now it locks it into horizontal. This line will remain horizontal no matter what I do to the rest of this sketch. A few pro tips as we wrap up, you'll notice that this is not a closed profile, so it won't extrude, right? Well, when we go to hit extrude, it's not going to work unless you kind of override it. There is an additional option in the extrude command called thin extrude. It allows you to place thickness at each line. Um, so I'll select this profile here and drag it. You can see that it's adding thickness to each line. Over in the parameters, you can decide which side of the line you'd add, like to add the thickness, or if you want it on both sides, you can kind of play with that to get the results you want. But the important thing is you can extrude when the shape is not fully closed, as long as you use this thin extrude option. Now, I noticed that that wasn't sketching the, or excuse me, wasn't extruding all of my line profiles. So when I sketch this line and now I hit extrude, the thin extrude should still be able to do all of it. I select the two, there we go. And in that thin extrude, maybe you noticed that it wasn't using the bottom edge or line. So all I needed to do was come in and select both holding control or shift. And now I can extrude all of it together. Another thing to be aware of is sometimes you need to sketch lines for your shape. We're going to close off this shape real quick. What if we were 3D printing this? And we need to take into account this other profile or other design that needs to slide into. And so maybe you want to do an envelope for this other shape and you fully uh, dimension it and everything, but it's supposed to fit within you know, these parameters. If you don't want to actually extrude or show these, uh, this outer profile, you just want this as a reference, I can double click on these lines. It'll wake them all up. I can right click and now choose normal or construction lines, or I can come in and just simply hit X on the keyboard. It'll make these constructions. So now they're a great reference. And when I hit extrude, it will not even try to extrude those uh, additional lines or profiles. Only the solid lines will be considered when it solving the 3D geometry extrudes, revolves, things like that. So hey, the plan is to work through all of these different Fusion 360 tools across the toolbar. I'll see you guys in the next video.